Popog Computer Works is a U.S. manufacturer and marketer of electronic video hardware for personal computers. Although it is most widely known for its WINTV line of TV tuner cards for PCs, Hopog also produces personal video recorders, digital video editors, digital media players, hybrid video recorders and digital television products for both Windows and Mac. The company is named after the hamlet of Hopog, New York, in which it is based. In addition to its headquarters in New York, Hopog also has sales and technical support offices in France, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, Italy, Poland, Australia, Japan, Singapore, Indonesia, Taiwan, Spain and the UK. Topic: <laughs> Company history. Hopog was co-founded by Kenneth Plotkin and Kenneth Al Pearl, and became incorporated in 1992. Starting in 1983 the company followed Microway, the company that a year earlier provided the software needed by scientists and engineers to modify the IBM PC Fortran compiler so that it could transparently employ Intel 8087s. The 80-bit Intel 8087 math coprocessor ran a factor of 50 faster than the 8 16 bit 8088 CPU that the IBM PC software came with. However, in 1982 the speed up in floating point intensive applications was only a factor of 10 as the initial software developed by Microway and Hopog continued to call floating point libraries to do computations instead of placing inline x87 instructions inline with the 8088's instructions that allowed the 8088 to drive the 8087 directly. By 1984 inline compilers made their way into the market providing increased speed-ups. Hopog provided similar software products in competition with Microway that they bundled with math coprocessors and remained in the Intel math coprocessor business until 1993 when the Intel Pentium came out with a built-in math coprocessor. However like other companies that entered the math coprocessor business, Hopog produced other products that contributed to a field that is today called HPC, high-performance computing. The math coprocessor business rapidly increased starting in 1984 with software products that accelerated applications like Lotus 123. At the same time the advent of the 80286 based IBM at with its 80287 math coprocessor provided new opportunities for companies that had grown up selling 8087s and supporting software. This included products like Horpage's 287 Fast, 5 a product that took advantage of the 80287's design that used an asynchronous clock to drive its FPU at 5 MHz instead of the 4 MHz clocking provided by IBM, making it possible for the 80287's that came with the AT to be overclocked to 12 MHz. By 1987 math coprocessors had become Intel's most profitable product line bringing in competition from vendors like Cyrix whose first product was a math coprocessor faster than the new Intel 80387, but whose speed was stalled by the 80386 that acted as a governor. This is when Andy Grove decided it was time for Intel to recapture its channel to market opening up a division to compete with its math coprocessor customers that by this time included 47th Street Camera. The new Intel division, PCEO, the PC Enhancement Operation, came out with a product called Genuine Intel Math Coprocessors. After playing around in the accelerator board business, PCEO would settle down in the 80386 motherboard business, originally selling a motherboard designed by one of its engineers as a home project that eventually ended up with a new division that today sells 40% of the motherboards used in high end PCs that find their way into products including supercomputers, medical products, etc. 
Companies like Hophog and Microway that were impacted by their new competitor that made their living accelerating floating point applications being run on PCs followed suit by venturing into the Intel i860 vector coprocessor business. Hophog came out with an Intel 80486 motherboard that included an Intel i860 vector processor, while Microway came out with add in cards that had between one or more i860s. These products along with transputer-based add-in cards would eventually lead into what became known as HPC high -performance computing. HPC was actually initiated in 1986 by an English company, Inmos, that designed a CPU competitive with an Intel 80386-387 that also included four twisted pair high-speed interconnects that could communicate with other transputers and be linked to a PC motherboard making it possible to create distributed memory processing computers that could employ 32 processors with the same throughput as 32 Intel 386 387s operating in a single PC. The add-in card parallel processing business morphed from the transputer to the Intel i860 around 1989 when Inmos was purchased by ST Microelectronics that cut R&D funding eventually forcing companies that had entered the parallel processing business to shift to the Intel i860. The i860 was a vector processor with graphics extensions that could initially provide 50 megaflops of throughput in an era when an 80486 with an Intel 80487 peaked at half a megaflop and would eventually top out at 100 megaflops making it as fast as 100 Inmos T414 transputers. i860 add-in cards made it possible for as many as 20 Intel i860 860s to run in parallel and could be programmed using a software library similar to today's MPI libraries which today support distributed memory parallel processing in which servers sitting in one U-rack mount chassis that are essentially PCs provide the horsepower behind the majority of the world's supercomputers. This same approach could be employed using Hopog's motherboards connected by gigabit Ethernet, something that was however first demonstrated using a wall of IBM RS-6000 PCs at the 1991 Supercomputing Conference. IBM's lead was quickly followed by academic users who realized they could do the same thing with much less expensive hardware by adapting their x86 PCs to run in parallel at first using a software library adapted from similar transputer libraries called PVM parallel virtual machines that would eventually morph into today's MPI. Products like the Intel i860 vector processor that could be employed both as a vector and graphics processor were end of life around 1993 at the same time that Intel introduced the Intel Pentium P5, a CISC processor that used CISC instructions that were pipelined into hard-coded lower-level RISC-like primitives that provided the Pentium with a superscalar architecture that also could execute the x87 FPU instruction set using a built-in FPU that was essentially implemented using the scalar instructions of the i860 as well as a memory bus that provided a 400 MB, SEC interface to memory that was borrowed from the i860 as well. This high-speed bus played a crucial role in speeding up the most common floating-point intensive applications that at this point in time used Gauss elimination to solve simultaneous linear equations by which today are solved using blocking and Lu decomposition. The Intel Pentium while good, did not provide enough floating-point performance to compete with a 300 MHz 21164 DEC Alpha that provided 600 MFlops in 1995. At the same point in time Intel supercomputing had moved from the 50 MHz Intel i860 XP that was six times slower than the DEC 21164 to the special version of their Pentium that at 200 megaflops was only three times slower than the 21164. 
However, the impending speed upgrade of the Alpha to 600 MHz ultimately doomed the future of Intel supercomputing. Motherboards During the late 1980s and early 90s Hophog produced motherboards for Intel 486 processors. A number of these motherboards were standard ISA built to fairly competitive price points. Some, however, were workstation and server oriented, including ASA support, optional cache memory modules, and support for the Ytech 4167 FPU. Hophog also sold a unique motherboard, the Hophog 4860. This was the only standard PC, at motherboard ever made with both an Intel 80486 and an Intel i860 processor optional. While both required the 80486, the i860 could either run an independent lightweight operating system or serve as a more conventional co-processor. Hophog no longer produces motherboards, focusing instead on the TV card market. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Product lines. Topic: <laughs> 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 Digital terrestrial satellite. Hophog digital terrestrial and satellite products capture DVB-T and DVB-S broadcasts respectively without the need to re-encode the streams. There are several benefits from this approach. The cost of the TV card can be lower because there is no need to supply an MPEG-2 encoder. The quality of captures can be higher because there is no need to re-encode streams. Ratio of file size to quality is higher due to the broadcaster's high efficiency in CODIS. Until August 2004, all of Hophog's DVB products were badge engineered Technotrend products. The first of the new Hophog designed cards was the Nova TPCI 9002, and the silent replacement of the Technotrend model caused confusion and anger among Hophog's customers who found that the new card didn't support Technotrend's proprietary interfaces. This rendered any existing third party software unusable with the new cards. The new cards also came with a software package called WINTV2000 which lacked features that Technotrend's software had including 7-day EPG, digital teletext and LCN-based channel ordering. The new cards supported Microsoft's BDA standard but at the time this was at its infancy and very few third-party applications included support for it. By 2005 all of the Technotrend products had been removed from the Hophog lineup, with the exception of the DEC 2000T and DEC 3000S which haven't seen a replacement. <laughs> <laughs> Hybrid video recorders The hybrid video recorder HVR range capture a combination of different broadcast types. The majority of Hophog HVR models capture analog PAL and DVB-T but there have been some more recent models which capture analog NTSC and ATSC as well as a tri-mode card which supports analog PAL, DVB-S and DVB-T. HVR 9XX devices are bus-powered USB 2.0 sticks, not much larger than a USB flash drive. They have support for analog and digital terrestrial TV. The HVR9XX sticks are produced in Taiwan by Deltron, and are also sold for Apple computers by Elgato under the EYE TV brand. HVR1XXX devices are PCI-based products that receive analog and digital terrestrial TV. They are similar to the HVR9XX but have support for NICAM or DBX stereo for analog terrestrial on all models. HVR3XXX and 4XXX devices are tri-mode and quad-mode devices respectively. 
Tri mode means support for analog terrestrial, cable, digital terrestrial, and DVBS digital satellite. Quad mode devices additionally support DVBS2 HD digital satellite. The HVR4000 marks a change in bundled applications in that instead of using Hopog's WINT V2000 package, it ships with Cyberlink Power Cinema. Topic: Personal video recorders. The personal video recorder (PVR) range uses an onboard MPEG MPEG-2 encoder to compress the incoming analog TV signals. The benefits of using a hardware encoder include lower CPU usage when encoding live TV. The first WINTV PVR product was the WINTV PVR PCI, launched in late 2000 and not receiving any driver updates since February 2002. It was joined by the WINTV PVR USB, which has two variants. The first variant supported MPEG-2 streams up to 6 megabits per second and supported half D1 resolutions 320 times 480. This was replaced by an updated model supporting up to 12 megabits per second streams and full D1 resolution 720 times 480. The first WINTV PVR to gain popularity was the PVR250. The original version of the PVR250 was a variant of the Sag Harbor PVR350 which used the IVAC15 chipset. Although the chipset was able to do hardware decoding the video out components were not included on the card. In later versions of the PVR250 the IVAC15 was replaced with the IVAC16 to reduce cost and to relieve heat issues. The PVR250 and PVR350 were joined by the USB 2.0 PVR USB 2 to complete their generation of devices. Their successors, the PVR150 and PVR500, were released alongside the PVR-250 350th, USB 2 and while popular with both OEMs and the general public, there have been numerous driver issues as well as video quality complaints. The PVR500 was released as a media center card and wasn't supplied with Hopog's WINT V2000 software. It was effectively two PVR-150s on a single board, connected via a PCI-PCI bridge chip. The PVR-USB 2 was silently replaced with the PVR-USB 2 Plus which is identical both visually and terms of features, but uses a Connexent chipset rather than the Philips chipset in the old model. From its name and time of release, the PVR160 appears to be newer than the PVR150 but it is not. The PVR160 is a repackaging of the WINTV Roslyn. The Roslyn is based on the Connexent Blackbird design and uses the CX2388X video decoder. This board was originally available only to OEMs and third-party software vendors such as Frey Technologies Sage TV and Snapstream Beyond TV. The board was sold under many names including the PVR250BTV Snapstream. This card is known to have color and brightness issues that can be corrected somewhat using registry hacks. Hopog received a large surplus amount of these cards from OEM and third-party vendors. The cards were repackaged with an MCE remote and receiver and rebranded the PVR160. The PVR160 was often mistakenly referred to as the PVR250 MCE but is not related to the PVR250. Topic: High Definition Personal Video Recorder. 
In May 2008, Hophog released the HDPVR, a USB 2.0 device with an onboard H.264 hardware encoder for recording from high definition sources through component inputs. It is the world's first USB device that can capture in high definition. The HDPVR has proved to be a very popular device, and Hophog has been updating its drivers and software continually since its release. In addition to being able to capture from any component video source in 480p, 720p, or 1080i, the HDPVR comes with an IR blaster that communicates with your cable or satellite set-top box for automated program recordings and channel changing capabilities. In 2012, Hophog released the HDPVR Gaming Edition 2, which features a much smaller design than its predecessor along with 1080p HDMI support. The PVR is not officially supported on Macintosh systems, but a variety of third-party programs exist that allow it to function on OS X, including EYE TV by Elgato and HDPVR Capture. In 2013, Hophog released an upgrade for the existing HDPVR2 with the HDPVR2 Gaming Edition Plus, which supports Macintosh systems. Topic: <laughs> WINTV Analog. The standard analog range of products use software encoding for recording analog TV. The more recent Hophog cards use soft PVR, which allows MPEG and MPEG-2 encoding in software provided that a sufficiently fast CPU is installed in the system. <laughs> <laughs> Media MVP The Media MVP is a thin client device that displays music, video and pictures hence MVP on a television. It is based on an IBM PO RPC RISC processor specialized for multimedia decoding. The operating system is a form of Linux, and everything including the menus is served to the device via Ethernet or, on newer devices, 802.11 g wireless LAN from the server PC. Various open-source software products can use the device as a front-end. An example is MVPMC, which allows the media MVP to be used as a front end for Myth TV or Replay TV. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Table of Products. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> WINTV Software. Hophog's principal software offering is WINTV, a TV tuning, viewing, and recording application supplied on a CD-ROM included with tuner hardware. A previous version was called WINTV 2000 WINTV 32 without skins. It had companion applications, including WINTV Scheduler, which performs timed recordings, and WINTV Radio, which receives FM radio. It was modified towards a service-based software package, with card management and recordings taken care of by the TV Server service and EPG data collection by the EPG Service allowing WINTV2000 to work with multiple Hophog tuners in the same PC. In 2007 Hophog launched WINTV version 6, followed in 2009 by WINTV7. WINTV8 was current as of 2016. WINTV updates are available without charge to Hophog tuner users major updates require access to a qualifying earlier WINTV installation CD, e.g. WINTV8 requires a CD not earlier than WINTV7. An option available at extra cost, WINTV Extend, allows TV to be streamed over the Internet to several portable devices such as smartphones, and PCs. Topic. 
Topic Wing Wing a supplemental software application from Hopog, allows the company's PVR products to convert MPEG recordings into formats suitable for playback on the Apple iPod, Sony PSP or a DivX player, it converts MPEG-2 videos into H.264, MPEG-4 and DivX. <laughs> Third-party software Third-party programs which support Hophog tuners include, GBPVR, Intervideo Wind VR, Snapstreams Beyond TV, Sage TV, Windows Media Center and the Linux-based Myth TV. Linux <inaudible> 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 Hophog offers limited support for Linux, with Ubuntu repositories and firmware downloads available on its website. There are drivers available from non-Hophog sources for most of the company's cards in IVTV and Linux TV. It appears that some of these drivers, Nova and HVR, are written by a Hophog engineer. The PVR150 captures video on Linux, but there are reportedly difficulties getting the remote control and IR blaster to work. Also, a January 2007 product substitution of HVR1600 in PVR150 retail boxes forced many Linux users to exchange their purchases because the Linux driver has not been updated for the HVR1600. Sage TV Media Center for Linux supports PVR150, PVR250, PVR350, PVR500, and Media MVP. For ATSC and DVB applications, a list of Linux-supported Hophog and other makes of TV cards can be found on the Linux TV Wiki page. See Supported Hardware section. Topic external links Hophog Computer Works Hophog Computer Works UK Hophog UK Support Forum PC TV Systems Sage TV a vendor of products based on Hophog hardware SHS PVR unofficial WINTV PVR and Media MVP Forums USB Vision partially functional Linux driver for WINTV USB the Hophog 4860 motherboard in detail WINTV PVR family identification